Closing down the Chandong Yellow Mountain Airport, it's so deserted. Not yet. Let's stop boasting now. Every day, we used to have good relationships with this customer and solid connections with that procurement, but now, we can't even spot a ghostly figure. Back when they asked me to move here, I knew it was all over. Where did the consumer population go? Where did the money go? Chinese bosses are feeling puzzled lately. What's happening in this market? Where did all the customers go? Stores on the main streets are closing in rows. International airports duty-free shops are empty, physical restaurants are closed, and you can't even find a place to have a meal. Many shops are still closed. Duty-free shops used to be crowded, and I can't find a place to eat. I'm so hungry and deserted, so you can imagine. This year's outbound tourism market, oh, it's still challenging for those who go abroad. Formerly a bustling commercial district, now it's empty and desolate. It seems like this year has been in vain. From the beginning of 2023 until now, the end of the year. The only thing left is a bit of hope, consuming even the last strand of hair. At a train station that is large but still without trains, there are many people. Bars couldn't survive and closed down, a vegetable shop couldn't make it and closed down. Over there, a supermarket also couldn't continue and closed down. However, these two pharmacies are holding on pretty well. In a private message from a delivery rider of Aleem, a food delivery platform, it's mentioned that before October, there were times when they could handle more than 70 orders a day. However, after October, it dropped to around 40 or 50 orders. Another person, who is a franchisee from multiple restaurant brands, shared their personal experience, stating that they have personally felt how tough this year has been. As expected, with 25 years in the culinary profession, their entrepreneurial attempt has failed again. The rent is 3000 and the meal isn't expensive, but it's hard to manage in this little more than 50 square meters. They had to clear out the tables, chairs, and air conditioner from their home and go back to work. Despite losing money these past few months, their wife hasn't uttered a single complaint. It's been more than 20 years since they started working. They began at the age of 16 or 17, right after finishing junior high school. After junior high, they started seeking a livelihood with relatives in the village. Following the principle of learning a skill to settle down, they became a chef. In the 25 years, they moved through several cities and finally settled down here. How long have they been running this shop? About 15 months, and they are losing money. In the previous years, there wasn't much competition in this industry. Each restaurant had its own customers, but at some point, selling food also became a form of competition. Doing business this year is really tough. Even after running a restaurant for a year or two, it has never been this difficult. The feeling is like buying ingredients and cooking everything yourself, but without the essence of the fish roe dish. In those years of working from dawn till night, during the good times, earning around 20000 a month, after many years, managed to buy a small house in the city. The elders in the village used to say, learning the skill of a chef means never being unemployed. However, this year, they have been unemployed several times. Running your own business carries risks. If it doesn't go well, you end up losing money. So, for those who haven't experienced it, it's better not to venture into the restaurant industry. It's really tough. China has transitioned from an incremental market to a stock market and various industries are now significantly saturated. With intense internal competition, we are currently grappling with a severe economic downturn. The era of quickly amassing wealth and seizing dividends has concluded. People are facing financial constraints, consumption is on the decline, and oversaturation is leading to an excess. The real economy is experiencing a recession. Presently, with a downturn in investment and a substantial uncertainty impacting foreign trade, many ordinary people are growing increasingly anxious and confused. The rich are getting richer, but their destinations remain unknown. The polarization is deepening, more people are in debt, fewer are engaging in consumption, more are unemployed, fewer are initiating businesses, more are turning to live streaming, and fewer are employed in the real economy. Physical stores are witnessing a decline in business, direct sales are being affected by tremendous uncertainty, and many ordinary individuals are experiencing heightened levels of anxiety and confusion. The poor are getting poorer, and the rich, even though they are still rich, may not be as rich as before. The divergence is becoming more serious, with more people in debt, fewer consumers, more unemployment, and fewer entrepreneurs. 
Live streaming is becoming more popular, but working in traditional industries is decreasing. Recruitment is decreasing, and more people are relying on deceptive practices. Genuine efforts are diminishing. Young people are choosing to lie low, avoiding mortgage and car loans, and refusing to strive for the next generation, not buying houses, not striving, not getting married, and not having children. This reflects the current mindset of more and more young people. Capital giants are cashing out, exiting from physical factories. Traditional companies are facing a breakdown in channels, decreasing foot traffic in offline stores, and the false prosperity of live streaming e-commerce. Many companies are laying off employees. True entrepreneurs are becoming rare. Opportunistic businessmen, who are willing to do anything for money, are causing destruction. They use price wars to kill physical stores, use price wars to kill physical factories, and use price wars to kill many restaurants. These internet giants lack a long-term perspective, exploiting the inherent flaws in consumers to make quick money. This has caused significant damage to the business ecosystem. Even Jack Ma now admits that if he were to start a business today, he would not choose an internet company. As these companies struggle, employees are inevitably laid off. Where will the money come from for consumption? Therefore, for China to move forward, it is crucial to manage and balance the country's business ecosystem. Rectifying the commercial ecology of e-commerce platforms, live streaming, and the business model's transformation to truly support the survival and development of small and micro-enterprises. Only then can ordinary people find more job opportunities. Walmart layoffs surge, the struggle of China's lower class. Recently, more than 400 Walmart stores in mainland China are planning a complete withdrawal, sparking widespread attention in society. It is reported that the number of layoffs will exceed 20,000, further deepening the life pressure on the lower class people amid China's current economic challenges. Even a fool would know that this matter is far from simple and involves significant complexities. Recently, in Jiangxi, a lottery player spent a whopping 100,000 yuan buying the same lottery ticket from two different lottery stations and winning an astonishing prize of 220 million yuan. This is like standing in the same place and getting struck by lightning hundreds of times within a minute. The peculiar aspect of this incident lies in the fact that he spent 100,000 yuan on the same lottery ticket, cleverly managing to evade taxes. In other words, the entire 220 million yuan prize is his, without a penny in taxes. It's unbelievably precise and flawless. If this person is not someone who traveled back from the future, then he is undoubtedly someone with insider information or market manipulation skills. Now, let's take a look at a shopping mall. This is the first floor, a bit empty and deserted. This area used to sell gold jewelry, but it moved out, and now there are only a few discounted clothing stores. Even the customer traffic at Watson's has been decreasing, and its popularity is insufficient. This store has closed down. When the popularity was high, there used to be long queues of people coming and going from the dance stores on this escalator all day long. This vividly illustrates the significant contrast between the past high popularity of Walmart and the current situation with fewer people. Look, even on the second floor, some stores have closed down, while others are still in business. However, there isn't much left. Rows and rows of stores are closed. Doing business here seems no longer viable. Take a look at this Walmart supermarket. The vegetable selling area has been emptied. The area that used to have the best business for the supermarket, the vegetable section, is now empty. Lastly, I found that there is still a small area for selling vegetables, but it has been moved to this corner and has become much smaller. This is the third floor, where daily necessities are sold. Fewer people, significantly fewer people. The area of this second floor shopping mall has also been reduced by nearly half. Over there used to be something, but now it's all separated off with much reduced space. Walmart is also in decline. According to reports, China has been facing economic challenges in recent years, making life increasingly difficult for ordinary people. The once bustling Walmart stores are now almost empty, and many people can no longer afford the high prices in the supermarkets. They can only sustain their livelihood by buying cheap and low-quality goods online. The withdrawal of Walmart supermarkets will directly lead to more than 20,000 people losing their jobs. For the already struggling lower-class population, unemployment not only means the interruption of economic sources but also the loss of social status and life security. 
This wave of layoffs will further exacerbate social instability among the lower class, making their predicament even more severe. At the same time, Walmart's withdrawal also reflects the Chinese government's helplessness in the face of the current economic challenges, as it emphasizes encouraging lottery purchases rather than focusing on substantial economic reforms, leaving the sufferings of the lower class people unresolved. This short sighted policy not only fails to address the fundamental issues but also exacerbates social injustice. One of the main reasons behind this change is the downturn in the Chinese economy, while the government seems indifferent to the struggles of the lower class. Instead, the government encourages people to buy lottery tickets, placing hopes of getting rich on winning lottery jackpots. The implementation of this policy has led to many people falling into poverty due to buying lottery tickets, and tragedies of broken families and deaths have occurred frequently. What's even more infuriating is the dark corners within China's lottery industry, with a considerable amount of funds being misused and flowing into the pockets of corrupt officials, leading many lower-class people who buy lottery tickets feeling angry and dissatisfied. This situation not only raises questions about the government's credibility but also deepens the disappointment of the lower-class people in the entire social system. At this time, Chinese society urgently needs the government to take practical measures to improve the living conditions of the lower class people rather than focusing on unrealistic policies that rely on dreams of winning the lottery. In times of economic hardship, the government should pay more attention to infrastructure development, support small and medium-sized enterprises, and improve social welfare, instead of relying on luck-based activities like lottery purchases. It must be said that Walmart's withdrawal is not just a disappointment for a single company but a cry of helplessness from the lower class people in the economic winter. It calls for the government to fundamentally review its current economic policies and take practical measures to improve the lives of the people rather than avoiding responsibility by focusing on dreams of purchasing and escaping in the illusion. Otherwise, the societal rift will deepen and the lower class people will continue to be victims of this ruthless economic chill. Next, let's look at some reports on Chinese issues. Recently, the deserted scene at Shanghai Pudong International Airport has attracted widespread attention. As a result, numerous duty-free shops are closing down, casting a heavy shadow over the entire retail industry. This is not just a problem for one airport but a clear manifestation of China's economic instability. The mass closure of duty-free shops means a reduction in business vitality. For businesses that have long relied on tourism and duty-free shopping, this is undoubtedly an additional blow. It brings significant psychological pressure and livelihood concerns to airport workers. The shadow of unemployment looms over them, leading to profound reflection on society. Not only in Shanghai, but the number of unemployed people in cities all over China is also rapidly increasing. A wave of corporate layoffs is wreaking havoc, causing great concern. The booming live streaming industry is not immune to difficulties. News of difficulties in making money has emerged in the Hangzhou live streaming industry, with physical stores closing down one after another. This series of events highlights the profound challenges facing the current Chinese economy. The closure of physical stores not only signifies business bankruptcy but also means a large number of employees losing their jobs. This has a significant impact on society, and many families face an economic crisis, directly impacting the living standards of residents. The difficulties in the live streaming industry also reflect the downturn in consumer spending. Honda's production line cancellation and China's economic decline The harsh reality of a sluggish market makes people worry about future development trends. On the other hand, Chinese car companies are experiencing a wave of layoffs, with Honda Group announcing the cancellation of production lines and foreign companies accelerating their withdrawal from the mainland. This series of events undoubtedly signals the rapid decline of the Chinese economy, bringing unprecedented anxiety to the vast labor force. The wave of layoffs is not limited to the automotive industry but extends to various sectors. This not only means that many families will face financial difficulties but also indicates the collapse of the entire industrial chain. The cancellation of Honda Group's production line is a signal that the downturn in the automotive market has affected the core of manufacturing. The accelerated withdrawal of foreign enterprises suggests a more profound concern about China's economic prospects. Due to a lack of foreign trade orders, many factories have entered a state of suspension, with workers forced to take three months of annual leave in advance. 
This not only violates workers' rights but also poses a serious hidden danger to China's economic development. While workers lose normal working hours, they also lose their rightful wages and social security. Factory shutdowns undoubtedly paralyze the entire industrial chain, directly affecting millions of workers. This also raises concerns about China's foreign trade situation. If foreign trade orders cannot be restored in a timely manner, the downward trend of the economy will be difficult to contain, and the issue of workers' livelihoods becomes a significant problem for society, bringing considerable impact on the stability and development of the entire society.